Okay, this is a video for grade 10 students uh, studying the lens ray diagrams. Just before we get into this, I just want to talk to you a little bit about stuff that's coming up. Um, I want you to be aware that on Wednesday, you guys are going to do some preparation for the literacy test. So we won't be having a science class on Wednesday, but we will on Friday. And on Friday, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna recap what we're doing here today and uh, make sure you understand about the I and then talk to you about the test, which is coming up next week and the uh, the culminating in, in the optic strand as well. So um, first thing is you guys should have a handout with a bunch of lens lenses for lens ray diagrams i believe i gave it to you last class now if i'm mistaken and you never got it that handout should be on my desk in the science office in a folder and hopefully your supply teacher is able to find that if you don't have the diagram um the handout diagram but i really hope that you do all right, so if you do have this handout, I want you to take that out. You're gonna need your ruler and your pencil, and I want you to have a look at this because I'm gonna review a little bit of lens ray diagrams, and then I want you to work on that worksheet, do those diagrams, and then you know discuss them a little bit. Perhaps the, the supply teacher can facilitate that a little bit, and you can share some of your, your, draw, your diagrams. And of course, I'm gonna talk about these and take them up on Friday, all right? So uh, have that sheet there, maybe pause the video for a minute, get that sheet out, get your ruler, get your pencil, and let's go over some of the theory. All right, assuming that you've got the handout there in front of you, uh, I wanna have a look at this, uh, this diagram right here. So we've got a biconvex lens here. Remember, this is a lens, not a mirror. And right over here at position A, this is where the object would be. So that's the object, an arrow, and we need to draw a lens ray diagram. We need to have at least two rays that intersect each other in order to find where the image is going to be. All right, so what happens is when we draw this one, uh, we're going to start, we're going to draw parallel to the principal axis and right in the middle where there would be the lens axis, um, that's where the ray is going to refract or bend and the ray goes parallel and then down through F. So here's the F position. Now don't worry about the fact that there are different letters here. You can see F1 and F2, that's fine. And then we have 2F1 and 2F2, all right? Parallel at the lens axis, refracting down through F and continue it down. Don't forget to put your arrow on the incident ray and your arrow on the refracted ray. Now, you can choose to do another ray. You could have gone down through F, and I can't draw straight here, and then parallel, and that would intersect as well. But in this case, they've drawn down from the arrowhead through the optical center and then on to where the rays intersect. And where the rays intersect, that's where you're gonna draw your image. And of course, it's the arrowhead here. So the tail is resting on the principal axis, and then you draw that. Now, this one in particular has to be drawn very accurately because when the object is at a specific point, like one of the focal points, the image is gonna be at the focal point on the other side, so it's gotta be very exact, and that's very hard to do. So that's how you would do this first one here, which does not necessarily correspond to number one on your sheet, I'm just giving you some of the theory. Now here's another one where you've got an object in between the two focal points, all right? We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna go parallel and then down through the F point, and we're gonna continue it on. We're gonna do another ray here that goes down through the optical center using that same rule again, and where they intersect, that's where we're gonna draw the image. And if you were to do this one correct, you'd find that, well, the image is larger than the object, so that's the image there. It's larger, it's inverted. In terms of its location, we've been saying that it's behind the lens. It's also past 2F, and the image is going to be real because it's formed by solid lines. Let's go over to this one. Now, this is a special case here with the biconvex lens. When the object is at the first focal point right here, F1, exactly on that point, you try to draw a ray that's parallel 
and then go down through F, refract it through F. Now, don't worry about these dotted lines. They're just saying it goes on and on. Okay, so you come down through F a certain distance. Then you say, okay, I'm going to draw another ray. I'm going to go again through the optical center. And if you do this accurately, you'll find that these rays never meet. They're parallel to each other. And there's no other way to do this. This is not a case where the ray diverges up there and then you dot it down through F and then you're going to have a little image there. That's not the way it is. This is a case where when the object is at the first focal point, there is going to be no clear image. Now, I don't know if there's one of those on the worksheet or not, but um, if there is, this is how you would do it. Otherwise, you don't have to worry. But if you see that the rays are parallel and there's nothing else that you can do, there is no image formed. In this case, where the object is inside of F, it gets a little complex. So start by going parallel to the principal axis and then refract this down through the, fo the focal point on the other side and keep it going. Then say, all right, I'm going to go down through the optical center, putting my arrowheads again every time on, uh, on the incident and refracted ray. Now, these ones are diverging a bit. This one's going out and this one's going out and they are not going to meet. In that case, they're not parallel and there is something you can do. In this case, try extrapolating them back using dotted lines, and if they meet, which they do in this case, whereas if you were to extrapolate these ones back on this previous image, again, they would be completely parallel. They would never meet, so you wouldn't be any further ahead. But because they do meet here, you are going to have an image over here. So object there, image over here. Now, because this is a virtual image, this this ray diagram draws the image as a dotted arrow all right instead of a solid arrow be to sort of emphasize that it's a virtual image all right so it's larger it is in front of the lens it is upright and it is virtual all right so that should get you going on all of these biconvex lenses now i want to have a look at the biconcave lens and they call it over here just the concave lens. So we again have a focal point here. We've got a focal point over here. They don't worry about naming them. You're going to see some other stuff here, DI and DO. And this has to do with the lens equation, which can be uh, used uh, to mathematically figure stuff out. But we're not doing that. So let's just look at the ray diagrams. We've got our object over here sitting on the principal axis. So the rules are the same. You draw your first ray coming here and hitting the lens axis. Now, they draw their arrow here instead of somewhere along the line. Not a major problem. Now, um, because this is a diverging lens, you're not going to draw down through the focal point. I didn't do that very well, but you're not going to draw... That's not much better, is it? There you go. You're not going to draw your, your ray down through the focal point. Instead, it's going to diverge, so it's going to go up. Now, in order to figure the angle out, you can't just draw on any angle you want. You're going to draw this down with a dotted line through this focal point, and then you're going to come back up here and continue it upwards, and that will give you the correct angle. So there's your first ray, parallel through F, but dotted, and then diverging because it's a diverging lens. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a ray that comes down here and go right through the optical center and continue it along. Now, where those two rays intersect, this is where the image is going to be formed. That's the arrowhead there. So you're going to get a small little image right there. So the size is smaller. The attitude is upright. The location is in front of the lens, actually inside of F because there will be F. So it's between F and the lens. Um, and this is going to be a virtual image because of this dotted line. This is another view of the same thing. We've got a more complicated object here. Uh, the ray goes parallel and then it's going to diverge. So you dot it back through F and then continue it along. And then you choose another ray. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this. Uh, this red ray says, I'm going to come down through the focal point 
so through through the focal point in parallel and it's really at the lens axis that it goes off parallel but we never looked much at that ray so let's just go down through the optical center and because the green ray here with the dotted line and this black one intersect right here that's where the image would be again it's the same as the one above but that's where the image would be with all of its characteristics all right so here's what i want you to do um, you can leave this up you can pause the video right there so you can see these lens ray diagrams i want you to go ahead and do the ray diagrams on your worksheet using these as examples finish all of those discuss them a little bit with your partner or the people around you if need be all right and once you know these then i want you to go on and work on the review sheets for your optics test now the review sheets i asked you to print them out and so i'm hoping that most of you have them already printed if you do, that's great. Take them out and go ahead and work through all of those questions. Uh, I will provide you answers for all of them, but you need to make sure that you know this. So give it a shot. Use your notes if you have to. Otherwise, just try to do them. You can discuss them a bit with your partner, but make sure you get all of those questions done. There are two pages to this review. If you don't have the review printed out, then I'm hoping that the supply teacher can find extra copies of that in the folder that was on that's on my desk in the science office and you can go through that and see if you can find those review sheets and work on those now there's one other thing that you can do if there's any time left in class after doing these lens ray diagrams and the review worksheets for practice for your test and that is to make sure that you have all the answers to the to the eye printout all right, because I believe that's that you have most of them. But if you're missing a little bit, I'm going to put the link up here. All right, for the supply teacher. And once you're done all this lens stuff, perhaps you could go to that link on the internet and find that I PDF and just finish up the I. And so then when Friday comes along, we can quickly take up this lens sheet. We can take up the review sheets. We can review the I. I'm gonna show you the model and go through the parts and get you ready for the physics culminating, which is going to be next week. Yours is going to be on Tuesday. That's the culminating. You can use your notes for this. Don't panic, you're gonna work in a group. And then your test is going to be the last time I see you before March break is going to be on Thursday. So it's a busy time, but let's just get all of this done so that when we come back from March break, you can dissect the, the sheep eye, the cow eye, I'm not sure which it is, and then we can get into chemistry. All right, everybody, let's do it. See you soon.